Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, as you can tell by the title, I want to share with you five things and talk about these five things that I did that dramatically changed my life in the last 30 days. And I am, and I can say I'm the happiest I have maybe ever been, or I I haven't been this happy in a really long time. And I want to share these five things with you. Some of them um, a little bit more introspective. Some of them are things that might take a little bit more mental or just spiritual energy from you and other things maybe a little bit more fun it just depends kind of where you're at and where your headspace is at before we get started i just wanted to say welcome to the welcome to the rebrand <laughs> if you are interested in these topics that i will be sharing in today's video i would love it if you would consider subscribing sticking around joining me here because it's something that i'm currently doing navigating through my late 20s trying to find a lot more meaning and purpose for me number one is i started having really difficult conversations with myself that I think being honest with myself I was ignoring having those conversations and I was kind of shutting those conversations and that internal dialogue down as soon as I started having those really difficult conversations with myself and and being honest with myself I started to feel certain shifts within inside me and I think that this very well may apply to you you know if if there is something you've been ignoring if there is certain blockages or negative feelings or negative situations or emotions that you're experiencing long term there may be some really difficult conversations that you might need to have with yourself and maybe you've been ignoring and i know it's so easy to ignore them i know it's so easy to just like oh we'll put that in the you know tomorrow basket because i'm not doing that today and i think the more you do that it will eventually come to a head and it I've experienced this anyway, like the more you kind of push certain things away and the more you push certain conversations that you need to have with yourself away, they kind of manifest in other ways within your health, within your your, your spirit. It may just end up leading to you having a full on mental breakdown because, you know, there's only so long that you can go ignoring conversations that you may need to have with yourself. I don't know if this is for you, but definitely in my case, I found it to be so easy to kind of push those feelings or thoughts away to the side. And I've now only recognized the power of my intuition, not only mine, but just women's intuitions in general. And I think that intuition is there for a reason. And the more that we ignore it or push it down or brush it away, I don't think that can really ever truly die, but it can really, really you can really put it to sleep and it can be really hard to wake up the, the more you ignore it. And I know to some of you, I may sound crazy talking about having conversations with yourself, but it is important. It's not only important to have these conversations with yourself. I think it's also important to listen to yourself. For so much of my twenties, I really struggled with, well, like, I feel like I've lost my intuition. I don't even know like what, what's real and what's not. Like, what do I really want? Like, what, what is my heart and my head telling me? And I think for me, the biggest realization was for me really be able to differentiate between my anxiety and my intuition and my deep inner wantings and my inner voice, as soon as I could differentiate between my anxiety and my intuition, um, it definitely felt a lot, I felt a lot more free and um, making decisions on a daily basis that align more with my intuition has been a lot more beneficial than just answering to my anxiety. So number two, a little bit more lighthearted and a little bit more fun, but definitely a lot more labor intensive, but I honestly am so glad I did it this way. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen these <laughs> photos. I now have a garden. I now have a garden, a very humble garden, yes, but a garden nonetheless. I've never really had flowers and trees and like things that I've actually been able to look after and it has been really beneficial to my mental health and I'm gonna have a list of the benefits of gardening um, and even just houseplants which I will touch on later it's funny how in my earlier 20s I was very much like no like fake plants are the way to go it was it was easy it was kind of like hassle-free I didn't have to take care of it I didn't have to worry about it I didn't have to maintain it it just there it was, throw it in, and there we go. And for me, it started with a herb garden. I started with a herb garden, and then I kind of progressed to potted plants, and you know, my boyfriend has chili plants now, I have a strawberry plant. I could rattle off all the different plants that I have, but it's definitely been a bit of a slow process, and I'm glad I did it that way, but it's definitely made an immense difference to my mental health. For months, was debating, oh, like, should I just like hire a landscape, or should I just pay someone to do it? And I'm really glad I didn't. I'm really glad I went ahead along the route of doing it myself. And I mean, major props to my boyfriend for actually helping me um, because it is tricky. It's hard, okay? I'm not the strongest being. And some of those soil bags are like 30, 40 kilos. It took about two or three weekends to really kind of nail it down. There was quite a lot of trips to the garden center. 
quite a few Saturdays were spent kind of removing all my fake plants and replacing them with real living things. Driving home from the garden center one day and I had this realization that I'd made all these changes to my outside space that really were making me so much happier um, and so much more calm. But then I thought, oh my God, like I had completely neglected the inside of my house. And to me, like with my deep thinking, it was just such a reflection of what it felt like my life was at the time. Like. I had spent so much time and so much money on the exterior for so long, you know, like how everything looked. It was kind of a reflection of my life, even just with my indoor fake plants, you know. As long as they looked pretty, as long as they looked real, it didn't matter what what they actually were internally. They were lifeless, dead, they weren't even dead, they were fake. They were lifeless. And if that wasn't a representation and a reflection for some areas of my life, I don't know what was. But I have noticed that since kind of transitioning to more real plants, I am just so much more happier. And I love this routine of, you know, five, 5.30, sometimes six o'clock, you know, when I switch off the day, I get away from my computer, I go outside and I fill up my watering cans and I just go have a look at them all. And I put my finger in the soil and I touch the leaves and I say hello to them and I smell the roses. And it's just such a nice feeling. I think I'm almost, suffocating my plants a little bit like I guess you know some would almost start, like drowning them in love you know sometimes some days my boyfriend is like step away from the plant drop the watering can step away from the plant it does not need it like sweetie it's literally rain today they do not need to be watered I get it I know you love this but you don't have to water them just you know admire them talk to them if you must but just put the watering can down and step away from the plants you will literally drown it with your love and that's been a real challenge for me because i just want to water them every day because I, I really enjoy it and, and just one quick story before i wrap up this point when I went to the garden center to, to pick some of my indoor plants, you know, the woman was so helpful and she basically gave me, and she didn't say it, you know, I said it, she was too nice to say it, but she pretty much gave me, I think, like really great beginner plant, indoor plants for dummies, she gave me. And she, before she sent me off in my car with these plants, she had me like lift up them, like lift up the pots and she was telling me, okay, this is how they feel. This is how um, a healthy watered plant, this is how heavy it will feel. Okay, this is what you're looking for. And I remember telling her, oh, okay, okay. And it, to me, it was so hard. I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to differentiate between like, I'm not going to remember how heavy this is in a week. Like, I'm not going to remember this exact weight that it needs to be. And I said, okay, I'm going to go home and I'm going to, I'm going to stick these plants on my scale and write down the exact, this is how like <laughs> crazy, um, I'm going to write down the exact grams of what these plants weigh. So every week I can weigh them and I can see, oh, are they the same amount? Are they not? Do they need water? Do they not? And she you know what she said to me? She said, oh yeah, that, that could be a good idea. Or you could just, you could just trust yourself. You could just listen to your instincts, get to know your instincts, get to know your plants, get to know your plants, get to know yourself and trust your instinct and get to know when your plants need need to be watered and you can kind of just treat like a little bit of a process and learn more about your plants and what they need and i was thinking damn that is deep and she is she's good here i was trying to you know figure out exact numbers and do it with so much structure and like weigh them and almost in like such a black and white instruction manual way of like okay this is how much they should weigh and this is how much water i may need to put in to get to that no no like truly no okay and that was when i realized no like this is an opportunity for me to get to know a plant and not only like get to know and trust myself because there has been so many times in the past where I look at something, following information as opposed to listening to myself. Again, another rambly point, but house house plants, okay? House plants and a real garden. And you know what? Fake plants may work for you. You may have um, you may have a really busy schedule. You may travel a lot, um, and maybe you can't switch all of the plants, or maybe you can't even maybe you don't even have any house plants. Just start with one, okay? Even if it's a tiny, even if it's a tiny little house plant. So it just like brings life into your space. It's a beautiful thing. And I may sound a bit hippy dippy, but reconnecting with nature and having a garden 
has been wonderful. Yeah. Next point, number three, I have um, enrolled, I've re-enrolled in study and I've actually taken up um, and I'm now part of a course that's kind of related to something else. And I know I'm not really giving anything away. I think at one point maybe I'll talk about it, but yeah, I've just recently re-enrolled in study um, and I'm really excited. I'm really enjoying it so far. And this was another point, but I've just included it in this because it kind of falls under the category of education. I, I love to read. I'm an avid reader. And all of last year, I basically solely read fiction and I am someone who loves fiction books but I have now switched up my fiction and also started to incorporate more non-fiction into my life you know I don't have a lot of responsibilities right now I don't have like kids or a family or anything like that um, I do have Flynn, but, and now my house, my, now my house plants, but they don't take up a lot of time. So, you know, dedicating an hour every night to this course or just like a couple of hours on the weekend works really well for me. But if that's not something you can do, I definitely recommend incorporating some education back into your life. That's something for me that's really, I've always enjoyed. And I think I kind of strayed away from that a lot. And I think it is quite easy, isn't it? Like it's so easy at the end of the night when you're exhausted. It's so much easier just to get into bed or flop into bed and just like, scroll the TikTok or scroll the Instagram and I'm very much guilty of that don't get me wrong but I think that reconnecting with um that that part of me that has always been there I've always been someone that really loves learning and is very curious and I, I've always been this way I love education um ever since I was a little girl you know bringing that back into my life and incorporating it through enrolling in study and through um incorporating non like non-fiction books back into my life it's definitely made me a lot happier but number four i want to talk to you about irreversible decisions irreversible changes or maybe conversations for you making those irreversible decisions or changes can sometimes propel you in the direction that you want to go so i guess for me the example i'm going to share with you because i don't want to get into too much of my personal life that does involve other people the example i'm going to give you is my youtube channel so you may have seen this video the last one i made sharing with you that I was no longer going to be filming and creating content about the old topics that I was sharing. And I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to come on and make such a blanket statement and share that with you. I could have kind of, you know, had like one foot in each bucket, if you will. But that wasn't serving me because I'd already kind of felt like I had one foot in each bucket for like over a year. And I needed to make an irreversible decision and a big enough change for me to realize, no, I'm not going back. We're not doing that anymore. And for me, that came in the form of literally publicly like speaking my mind and telling you, this is it, this is done, I'm done. Making that irreversible statement, to me, that, to me again, it felt irreversible, was the way I needed to go to create change in my life. So... Sometimes having a conversation, saying something that you know you can't take back, once you put enough commitment in something, like once you put money behind something, booked something that's non-refundable, made such a bold statement, you don't really want to go back. Like you're in, you're going this way now. And sometimes that's what it takes. And number five, I think a really, it's such a simple thing, but it's, it's a lot of us are so again, swept up in our day-to-day -day lives and our busy lives that we either forget or we don't make time for these things. Um, and for me in the last 30 days, picking up new hobbies, has been a really great mood booster for me and it's really added a lot more happiness to my life. So some of the examples that I have, um, I went to a croissant making class, it was a two day class. Ah! I have a new appreciation for the art of making croissants. Confession, this one's been something that I've been working on for the past few weeks. I don't know how to swim, okay? I'm not a confident swimmer. Maybe you didn't know that about me, but it's kind of crazy. You know, I live on a giant floating island country in the middle of nowhere, and I don't feel comfortable in the water. We don't have time to get into why I never learned how to swim as a child. There is a, there is a backstory there, but today is not the time for that. But just know I am not a swimmer, and I know that's not true. That's an identity that I'm no longer resonating with. I did not used to know how to swim. I am now in the process of learning how to swim. I am taking private adult swim lessons. Um, and every time I get out of that pool, gee Louise, I am exhausted. Okay, I'm so exhausted, but the level of accomplishment and pride I feel for completing that is unmatched. It's unmatched. Um, I love my swim instructor. She's lovely. This has been something that I've been saying that I've wanted to do for the last few years, but never really got around to it. That weirdly, like these things equate to happiness, but in the moment, they're not enjoyable. Like I'm still trying to figure out if I just don't like swimming 
um, because I, I'm just not a water baby or if I just am really bad at it, which is contributing to how much I don't like it. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not giving up. Okay, I'm not giving up. I'm still showing up to those damn lessons, but I don't like it. Okay, I don't like it. And I think part of it's probably because I don't like it because I'm not good at it. Okay, I'm when I tell you I'm choking, okay, I'm swallowing water, I'm coughing my guts up, there's water in my mouth, in my nose, in my throat, in my ears, okay? And then I'm worrying about the four-year-old children that are there for their class, like they arrived to their class five minutes early, um, while mine's still going, and I'm like, oh my god, they're judging me. They're judging me. No, they're not, they're four and five, okay? Four and five-year-old children don't judge. Um <laughs> And like it is, it's a level. I love cardio, but this is a this is a form of exercise that is so foreign to me. It is exhausting, it's so exhausting, and it's really again a great lesson for life. And again, this is something that my instructor just told me last week. She said, "Caitlin, I know it's really hard, but." I want you to try so hard. And whenever you get water in your mouth, or whenever it gets in your ears, or whenever it gets in your throat, I know it's like instinctually so hard to do, but please just, can you just please try to just keep going. And if that is not a motto for life, I don't know what is, okay? It is, it is teaching me a level of resilience. And I don't know about you, but when was the last time you did something that you feel so out of like, I am like a fish out of water. I'm out of my depths, okay? I'm out of my depths in this tiny little pool. This is a shallow pool, by the way, and I'm way out of my depths. Like, and my question to you is, when was the last time you did something that you felt stupid, embarrassed, or so out of your depths to do? Um, and it is like, it's retraining parts of my brain because as soon as I swallow water, as soon as it gets in my ear, my first instinct is to just freeze and jump up and go, <laughs> I'm drowning when I'm actually not. Um, <laughs> and that kind of, that is like retraining my brain to just, you know what? We're okay. We're, we're okay. Just keep going. You know, just like Dory said, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim, swim. Um, and <laughs> it is really like, don't get me wrong. I hate it. I hate it. I'm not giving up though. And weirdly, I'm doing something on a weekly basis. Now I've increased it to twice a week. Crazy, I know. And I hate it. But I'm sticking to it because as much as I hate it, when I finish it and when I jump out that pool, I feel really great. And I, it's, it makes me feel good. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling. So this was a really long-winded video. Um, but I really hope that you took at least one or two things away from today's video. <laughs> And share with me in the comments down below what's maybe been contributing to your happiness. If you felt extra happy in the last month or something that you've changed, something that you recommend um, and it's really made a difference to your happiness. Or share with me if there's anything from today's list that you're going to try or you're going to give a go. Or maybe um, I've encouraged you to take up swimming or like cooking classes or something that... Um, improves your happiness in some way. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for joining me in today's video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.